G'day beer lovers. On the South Perth foreshore in Perth, they've commenced trials for a driverless bus. Yeah, goes up and down the Esplanade here. Started operations 12 months ago and it's a sign of the future. Yeah, in the future there's going to be driverless cars, driverless buses, probably driverless planes, all using GPS navigation systems. So, to ride on Perth's driverless bus, all you have to do is book totally free. Yeah, it's amazing. It's operated by the RAC. So, I'm going to take a ride on Perth's driverless bus. Okay, follow me. Let's do it. manufacturer of bar one is investing in autonomous vehicles. Any price for guessing? Who isn't? Uh, it's Russians. <laughs> <laughs> Ferrari. Okay. They want to drive it. Yep. So the yeah. fact that they're all investing means autonomous vehicles are on the way. Yeah. But there's no legislative framework in which they can operate on our roads currently. The word driver in control of a vehicle is repeated over and over and drives so the ROC are trialling an AV vehicle to see how it can the public, how the technology works, and will then gather all the data and make submissions to the federal and state um, regulatory bodies to help in framing future legislation, so in advising and advocating framing future legislation to accommodate these vehicles. vehicle and it's not a test of electric vehicles they've proven they're in mass production they can be of any size you know all pack trucks um, down to little scooters can be any size what we're looking at this year are four main areas first and foremost we're recording but we're not actually actively including it in the information the decision making stereo vision cameras they're going to be used in later stages of our trial identify objects in front of us, identify street signs, um, traffic light colours, etc. What we are using, we do have GPS, or GNSS, GPS as it's commonly known. Now, you would all have GPS in your phones, you would have it in your car, and it's accurate to within about 5 or 10 meters. The GPS system we are using here is accurate to within 1 centimetre. How did you use that? You might be traveling in a bus. I'll give you a breakdown of how we achieved that. So because we're one centimeter accurate, we were able to place the bus on a virtual path one centimeter wide, and it follows that path every time. It does not deviate off the path. If it needs to deviate off that path to go around an obstacle, an irregular obstacle that is now in our path, we have to then take it off, go around and back on path. I'll explain why once we've been traveling. The technology that's most important here is our LIDARs. This is what differentiates this level 4 vehicle um, from some of the other commercially available vehicles that are using the cameras or not to guide themselves. So, have you heard of radar? Yeah, yeah. Radio, direction and range. Sonar, <laughs> sound, direction and range. LIDAR is light, direction and range. So we have a 3D LiDAR on the front and the back of the bus, and we have two two-dimensional on the front, two on the back, one on either side. So six around the side, seven. Wait, is, that, is, that, is that there? That's it there. That's the LiDAR unit in there. There's one up here and there's one down low, throwing beams out this way. So what they do is they're spinning a 1200 RPM and throw out a, I think the 3D, so 16 beams of um, UV light, 
yeah. that hits hard surfaces, reflects back, and then the algorithm's there to convert it into a topographical map to give us a path. But it's also very accurate at measuring the distance. In fact, surveyors are starting to use LIDARs now. It's so millimetrically accurate. So what it does is it paints a very accurate 3D map of the scene. When we went and plotted the course to start with, set out the map. As we run now, we go and re-record and we map. And that's how it does correlate. Are we in the exact same spot? And it should correlate with our GPS. point we were traveling at three meters per second. We're now doing two meters per second around the corner, about nine kilometers an hour. And as we come out of the corner, we straighten up after a short while, you'll feel us go back up to three. It does, it does the same every time. So it won't get distracted and forget to slow down for the corner. It won't go around the corner too quickly. It'll do the same. Yeah. So what do you actually need to control? This, this enables, if we have the door open scenario, the yeah. bus is not deviate from its path, yeah. the bus would stop. Yeah. I would then drive the bus around the obstacle and right. back on its path. Right. At this stage, right. we're not allowing the bus to make its own deviations at you. Okay. If it was to deviate, it would be going into oncoming traffic, yeah. which is the next level of risk. And it's not at this stage we're not allowing it to do that. So if you're going to go around the obstacle, then we need a licensed driver to make the decision and actually to perform. So, so I'm not turning the bus to slow down, I'm not turning the bus to turn, I'm not turning the bus to speed back up. Because all that's pre-programmed. The only thing that would cause us to stop would be a conflict. You know, someone put in front of the bus or a fallen tree branch or a bad car. In fact, now we're about to pull back into our bus bay and you'll see Dave's actually pulling it down. So we're not 